Okay, so chapter one was um, why is it important to learn math facts to automaticity? The, chapter two is why should you use rocket math to do it? And the reason um, it, it comes by looking at why don't most children learn math facts well? Um, I mean, the fact is that um, math facts are the simplest possible level of learning. You know, teachers used to ask me when I first started doing workshops on this, it, well, but not everybody can learn math facts. I said, listen, if they're smart enough to be able to find your room two days in a row, they're smart enough to learn math facts. That's easier, you know. A math fact is far easier. But a lot of kids don't learn it, so what's the problem? What, what's hard about it? It's not hard in itself, it's just that there's two common practices, the way we teach it, that make it difficult. One is that we introduce them too fast. So the, there's a lot of facts to be learned, and you have to introduce them slowly enough so that a student can master them. Um, and then the second thing is that the corrections uh, that are given are usually inadequate and ineffective. So rocket math is effective because it solves those two problems. Um, it solves the problem of pacing by controlling the rate at which math facts are introduced based on student mastery. So it individualizes throughout the room uh, for each kid they have as long as they need to come to mastery. And then the second thing is this peer practice, it's set up for students to work in pairs, the peers provide the effective kind of corrective feedback um, where students then have to uh, remember the answer and say it themselves, each and every one of them. Uh, and choral responding, choral practice uh, doesn't do that because um, you, if you don't know a particular fact, you just are quiet on that one. And, um, and then you, you can rely on everybody else to you know, chime in and fill in for you. When it's one-on-one, -on -one, you have to learn the fact. So we use small steps to get to mastery in rocket math, and that's the key. So set A in addition, for instance, teaches one plus three, one plus two, and the reverses. That's all that they have to learn. And you can see a little light bulb go on uh, with kids who've been counting on their fingers. Is it like as they're doing the practice, you know, the eighth time they say, you know, their partners, you know, they read it as one plus three, they just go, four. They stop putting up their fingers. They just remember it, right? And that's what you teach them is you just need to know these. You don't have to keep figuring them out. You have to know them. Um, and so they practice with a peer, then they have a one-minute timing. And the one-minute timing is just on one plus two and, um, and <laughs> one plus three, and they reverses. Uh, that's all they have to do. And they can answer those, and they go, oh, well, this is easy. And they can do it quickly. And so then in the next set, we just add 1 plus 4 and 1 plus 5 and their reverses uh, to the set. Again, the next day, they practice with a peer, um, and then they take a timing on sets A and B. Uh, and again, if they pass, then they move on to set C to learn some more. If they don't pass, they repeat set B tomorrow. So it's just like feeding mush to a baby. Um, you, you learn to do this when you're feeding a baby mush. Um, you want to wait until they get the last mouthful down before you give them some more, otherwise they begin to look like a chipmunk. Uh, and so um, that, that's essentially what we do. Here's a little mouthful of facts to learn. Practice. If you got those down, we'll give you some more. If you don't, keep chewing, you know, and uh, the next day and the next day until they do. So that's why... Um, Rocket math is so successful because it solves the learning problem that most kids have. 